Hello guys, you know Jesus said uh, my yoke is easy and my burden is light and in this video I will show you how to reach that level where uh, the, you, you experience the easy yoke of Jesus and, and, and how light his burden is. But before I start, I just want to say a shout out to my dear friend Nathan and uh, Nathan from Wartom Leadership. Go to wartomleadershippodcast.com. The link is below and you will be blessed. Without further ado, let me show you. You see, when you decide to serve the Lord, most people fall into this category. And that's most people. My friend can go right here. Okay. So, they start here. Now, some people, they might even start all the way here. So, they start here, and this is what I call the zeal. They serve God. They're very excited to serve the Lord. They're very zealous about the Lord. So, that's the zeal. So, they, you, you will see someone just get born again and just want to go for the Lord. They're very excited. They're moving forward, and there's nothing wrong with that. But eventually, they're going to reach a point what I call the wall, the wall of duty. There's a wall where you, you reach that point where your zeal, uh, uh, your zeal cannot carry you further. And usually it happens when you start to face persecution, where things don't work out the way you thought they will, they, they will work out. Or sometimes when God starts to touch your idols, right? You start to remove some of the thing that uh, you used to be idol. Let's say you love football. Uh, you always go and watch football. Now God is saying, I want you to go to church. Uh, skip that football game. You, you start to hit those places where God is removing some stuff so that God is the only focus. So I call it, so here the excitement, you reach that point where you're not excited anymore like that. You're not excited anymore. And the problem is many people, they serve the Lord with the zeal. So when they're not excited anymore, they just draw back. So I'm going to draw something here. That's that wall here. It's that wall here, right? And so when you hit that point, you have a, a decision to make. For you to continue is what I call you have to enter the phase of duty. Okay? You have to enter the phase of duty. You have to have a, a shift in you where what you do for the Lord is duty. Okay? What do I, what do I mean by duty? I mean by duty is... Think about a father, for example. Sometimes the father just, just see the child. The child is a newborn, he's excited. Oh my God, my boy is so, my daughter, she's so beautiful. My boy is so beautiful. And, 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 then, and then the responsibility start to happen where you love your child, but it costs a lot of money. You have to do this, you have to do that. So I, I remember a movie about Desert Washington where I believe his son came in that movie and said, well, I don't know if you love me and something like that and uh there's a washington goes man I'm, I'm your father not because i love you because that's what i must do i'm the father you see so the duty you come to that place where it's not about the excitement anymore you don't serve because you're excited you serve because you have a sense of duty you have a sense of of, of gratitude they say i'm a child of god and and i must serve the lord so therefore whether you're excited or not you just do you just do what the Lord tells you to do. And you will see that you need to cross over to that. Otherwise, you will never get here. You will never get here. And, and here you start to you start to overcome some some uh, some uh, some resistance, right? Some persecution. But you have to have a shift in you where it's not just about the excitement or the adventure, it's about the duty. Let's say, for example, you want to go to Cambodia, but God is telling you, no, I want you to stay in your neighborhood. You're not excited to be in your neighborhood, but because you, 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 you want to do the things of God, you stay there and you do what God asks you to do. That's the duty part, right? But then even at the duty, you're going to face another stage that you need to enter. And that stage, <clears throat> I call it resilience. The, the, the stage of resilience, okay? Resilience. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you enter the stage of duty, the persecution will increase. 
it will push even stronger like like like, like gravity is trying to pull you down right you have to be resilient this is where i stand like joshua joshua says you you do what you do but as for me and my house we will serve the lord as for me and my husband, we serve the Lord. So it's that place of resilience. The, the, the enemy is punching you. Everything's coming at you. Your family is insulting you. She's just like, nope, I'm I'm moving forward. Uh, 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 that 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 girlfriend or boyfriend who doesn't want to serve the Lord that you used to you used to do some sting, you know, some crazy stuff with. They, they they come into your life and say, Hey man, I miss you. You say, Nope, I don't want that here. My life is to serve Jesus. I am a soldier of Christ. I must continue the good fight of faith. That's resilience. Resilience, right? So you, you, you just, you, you, you harden, battle harden, you just move forward. And then you hit that wall where resilience cannot help you anymore. And you have to cross over into ultimately where you need to be, why you need to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's my favorite. And you enter. Let me put resilience here. And you enter the stage of love. Where now you serve God simply because you love Him. See, the Bible says. Perfect love cast out all fear. There's nothing that can be against love. That's where you want to be. Again, there's nothing wrong with the zeal. But the zeal can only bring you so far. There's nothing wrong with the duty. But the duty can only bring you so far. There's nothing wrong with resilience. But the resilience can only bring you so far. But ultimately, when you start to serve the Lord because you love him, there's actually no <clears throat> nothing that can stop you at that point. You reach the level of no limit. I remember one time someone asked me, why do you serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Is that because you're trying to gain uh, his approval? And I said to that lady, I serve him because I love him. It's as simple as that. <laughs> I serve him because I love him. It's as simple as that. That's where you want to be. Because when you are serving the Lord because you love him, guess what? No matter what he asks you to do, you do. Here, if it's only zeal, the day that you're not excited, guess what? You go back. If it's only duty, the day that you hit that wall, something happened, an offense, Anything that you never expected to happen, you will start to be offended. You can be at resilience, but guess what? There's always something that will break that resilience. It's just a matter of time before the enemy finds something. And when he finds it, you might draw back. But when it's love, nothing, nothing can conquer love. Absolutely nothing. So my prayer to you right now is that you found out where you are here and you ask the Holy Spirit to help you to continue to move, move, move until you get to that place where you serve Jesus because you love him. And I finish with this. Someone saw me, I was winning souls, uh, preaching the gospel. And the person says, I see you're very passionate about uh, preaching the gospel. I say, I'm not passionate about preaching the gospel. I'm not passionate about evangelism. I'm not passionate even about the, the, the preaching or doing this. I'm passionate about Jesus Christ. And everything that I do is through that passion. Because when I'm passionate about him, no matter what he asks me to do, no matter how hard it is, but because I love him, I will still find a way to eventually do it. God bless you.